this point, I'm leaving because I don't feel a sense of confidence in this process anymore. There's what I consider to be an unassailable lead, and this is not just um, about not doing as well as I thought. With the process, with the process that has been called into question several times, which has called the integrity of this election um, into question. You know, I believe that with all that has happened, I think that some adjustments should have been made to the process. What, so, what, when you say adjustments, when you say adjustments to the process, what are your concerns specifically? Okay, well, um, there were persons who were, were, were said to have been close to a particular candidate um, and all up in the election machinery, you know, in an intimate way. Mm. And for integrity to thrive, you would have to adjust those things, especially that you've had, especially since you've had more than one candidate um, question these connections and these linkages. You understand? So there's an air of discomfort. And I know how we went hard on the canvas and I know somehow the result does not seem reflective to some, of the, some even some of the confirmed votes that I got. So at this time, I, I, I felt that, I feel as though, you know, I don't have a real chance here, you know, or didn't have a proper chance with the way how the election was managed. I don't know what loopholes would have been there or whatever, you know, so, I mean, there could be a recount and so on, but numbers in the box won't change. Well, any issue with a vote or recount has to be based on some reasonableness that potentially the result can be, uh, the review of the result can probably potentially change. Now, if you look at the results we had, I think Sister Kimberly amassed 400 and something votes out of 500, so uh, the recount process is not going to change something like that. So yes, we are open to a process of recount or a review, but once it is based on some legitimate um, premise, we can review it. And what I will say to you is that a recount at this time will not necessarily change any results in terms of what the ballots have been cast. It will not change that. Um, any discontentment with process and transparency, um, unless we have the evidence, um, we cannot merely re um, recall the process unless there are clear breaches that there's evidence. Okay, but we can understand individual opinions, we can understand persons' expectations, and this is something that can happen in an election where you gauge your expectations, you gauge your response, and you anticipate uh, outcome. So this is something that, that can happen to any individual. But as yet, I don't see anything to, no evidence to recall this process for review. Okay. Thanks again, Wayne. I appreciate it. Are you concerned about the low turnout as well? I mean, that, 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 is this one among, how does this rank in terms of turnouts over, over previous elections? In all fairness, there are a number of factors. The elections was originally scheduled for July the 19th. In fact, it was constitutionally due the first week in April. It would appreciate due to the constraints of the COVID-19 protocols. We have to defer it to July the 15th. And remember then we defer the deferral and the other contentious issues with the court injunction, have other issues, then that would have added to it. And even in the environment, um, quite a number of public officers are working from home. So there are a number of factors that would have contributed to the turn not being the same as before. But once things return to some level of normalcy, I, I am confident you can get back that type of activity um, once in terms of the environment, in terms of people being able to come out, in terms of the the restrictions not being there. I'm confident that with, with settling back to a level of normalcy that you can see that activity again that you would have had before.